really efficiently. So the first thing that we're going to do in this case is we're going to go ahead and set this equal to 0. So you subtract a 5x on both sides, subtract a 2 on both sides. 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 equals 0. Does so everybody follow me? I'm just moving along a little bit quicker. Okay. So now you guys can see that now we have an a here. right? Before, a was 1. So we're still going to follow the same process, but now it's a times c and then b. So I multiply a times c. 3 times negative 2 is a negative 6, and then negative 5. So therefore, um, the, again, the main important thing is when you guys are thinking about these, you have 6 times 1 and 3 times 2. Now, uh, the only reason why I'm writing this out, because I, I assume that majority of you guys can figure this out on your own, the main important thing is when you guys are thinking of these in your head, think about what two numbers multiply given a 6. They have to add to give you negative 5. If they're adding to give you a negative number, the larger factor has to be negative. Would that, would that make sense? So. Whenever I'm writing out my factors, especially for negatives, I look at what the middle term is. If it's positive, the larger factor has to be positive. If it's negative, that means the larger factor would have to be negative. And you guys can hopefully see that negative 6 and positive 1 are going to be your two factors. Now, the main problem that students will do, which even in pre-calculus, I still have students do it, is they'll do it just like we had the a equals 1. Um, what they'll basically do. What they'll basically do is solve like this. But guys, this is not the factored form. x times x gives you x squared, not 3x squared. Negative 6 times 1 does not give you negative 2. So this does not work. So what we're going to do, there's many different ways to do this. And I have videos showing you how to do it if you want to watch. But the best thing I would tell you guys to do is to break apart the negative 5x using your negative 6 and 1. So we'd look like this, 3x squared minus 5x plus 1x minus 2 equals 0. Six. 6x, thank you. So I'm just taking the values that I found here, rewriting them there. And then now I can apply grouping. Okay. And now what that happens is grouping, basically what you're doing is you're grouping the first two terms and you're grouping the last two terms. Then you factor out the GCF like I did in that second video. You factor out the GCF of each term. So 3x squared and negative 3x or negative 6x have a 3x in common, which leaves me with a x minus 2. And then the x minus um, 2, you could factor out a positive 1. And that would leave you with a x minus 2. And basically, your goal is to factor out the GCF so your quantity inside the parentheses All I did, did you, do you see what I did from here to here? All I did, do you agree with me that negative 6x and 1x is the same thing as negative 5x? All I did was rewrite negative 5x as negative 6x plus 1x. Why did I not do negative 3x and 2x? That equals negative 5x, right? The reason why I chose negative 6x and positive 1x is because that was the values that I got from over here. Okay, So I just rewrote those. Then I grouped the first two terms, grouped the last two terms, factored out the GCF, factored out the GCF. The common factor of this is 3x. A common factor of this was positive 1. Now they have a common factor of x minus 2 and x minus 2. And by factoring that out, I'm left with a 3x plus 1 equals 0. Now I can apply the zero product property, which I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show that uh, well, I'll do x minus 2 equals 0 and 3x plus 1 equals 0 x equals 2, x equals negative 1 third, 